Spent most of my career in narcotics enforcement, then retired from there and went on to join the Baltimore Police Department as the commander of training. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, right in the center of the city. It was a community with thriving businesses. Today, it's desolate. A lot of that has to do with the drug trade. We can't revitalize these communities until we end the violence. A close friend of mine who was working undercover for the Maryland State Police, his name is Ed Totley. This particular case he was working, where he was buying cocaine from a mid-level dealer, and he was gonna make the final buy. They had set up the deal, they went to the location, this guy wanted, I guess he decided he wanted to keep the drugs and the money. And in order to do that, he figured he would have to kill Ed. And he shot him at point blank range in the side of, side of the head. By making drugs legal, you, you eliminate the violence. When we end alcohol prohibition in the early 1930s, right away, Al Capone was out of business along with the violence that followed him. If we were to decide tomorrow that we're going to end prohibition and figure out a, a way to legalize these drugs that are currently illegal, first things that happen is number one, the violence subsides. I'd say we it would experience like an 80 to 90 percent reduction. We need to start having these serious conversations based on truth and science and fact so that we can end these policies that are re really just tearing communities and classes and races of people apart. Using these sort of tact robberies that we went out on that you would use in Vietnam or using some type of war-torn zone. And all of the stuff that we were doing, just calling it the war on drugs. And it wasn't very many black guys in my position. 